Good morning. Welcome along. It's breakfast. BBC Radio Merseyside. Good to have you with us. Tony Snell, I was going to say the breakfast team. The breakfast team are upstairs doing all, all the hard work. I'm down here pushing buttons and, and talking some rubbish for you. Uh, good to have you with us. Uh, Let's talk about, uh, well, COVID. NHS trusts a warning that the virus testing system's failure to keep up with demand is putting the health service at risk as it prepares... For the autumn and the winter, NHS providers, which represents Trust in England, say some hospitals are reporting a shortage of tests uh, Well, from last weekend, really, which meant staff were waiting too long to get the all clear to return to work. So meanwhile, leading researchers from across the country will brief a special parliamentary committee on the long-term health impacts of COVID-19 and what healthcare services uh, could be needed as we move forward. Now, in part of an ongoing inquiry by the House of Lords Science and Technology Committee, that aims to help the government and society learn from what we've been through, learn from the pandemic and just prepare for the future. Professor Tom Solomon is director of the UK's Emerging Infections Research Unit at the University of Liverpool, also professor of, uh, professor of neurology at the Walton Centre. Uh, it's one of those giving evidence to the committee this morning. Professor Tom, thanks for being with us. Um, what sort of lessons does the inquiry aim to, to learn today from this inquiry? Well, um, o- overall, the inquiry is learning all sorts of lessons from the pandemic. But today in particular, we're going to be talking about uh, the longer term effects of the virus uh, on the brain and, and what the implications might be for that. And we've seen during this pandemic, although initially the main problem was about breathing, Uh, it's become clear that the virus can also damage the brain. And those are some of the things that I'll be talking about in the Lord's Inquiry. Um, What will happen to its findings at the conclusion of of the investigation? Well, I think, I mean, there's no legislation that would follow from a a Lord's um, uh, Inquiry, as far as I understand it. But they're effectively scrutinising what's happened so far. And in particular, I think they're trying to look at the impacts for the future. Uh, as this pandemic continues, um, and then also as we might have other similar problems in the future. Um, you, you mentioned the impact of, of the inquiry, not only on people's breathing, but we've, we've learned uh, a lot. Maybe we're just at the tip of the iceberg with this, but we have learned a lot over the past uh, five or six months about the virus, and, and we're learning every day. That will be uh, a worry for, for many people uh, about the effects, not only on, on breathing, but different parts of the body. That's right. Uh, what, we, what we've learned is that this virus can affect the brain in, in, in various ways. We've seen increased numbers of patients with strokes, which we haven't really seen with a, a respiratory virus before. Um, we've also seen that it can cause people in hospital to be confused, to have delirium. And again, that's more perhaps than we might expect. And then there's also a big problem. You were talking about mental health in the mm. news and, and a, pro, a, a program being put on by Marine Football Club there's a big increase in mental health problems, both among people who've had the infection and been hospitalised, uh, also those who've uh, had the infection and stayed at home, but even among people who've not had the infection but have just become terrified by the whole pandemic. See, that, that is a worry, isn't it? Because, you know, it, it is constantly in the news and it has to be in the news to keep people updated. But I suppose it's up to us in a way, on how we, we consume that. And we're all different in, in, in different ways and, and we all take in and soak up information in different ways as well. But we, I think we've got a, a bit of a role to play to, to get things into context too. I think that's right. I mean, it's very hard for people, you know, on the one hand, uh, they're being told the numbers are going up now and we have to start uh, I, um protecting ourselves, you know, limiting the number of people that meet, et cetera, et cetera. On the other hand, though, we're trying to get things back to normal in terms of the economy. And some people can cope with all of that. Uh, but understandably, uh, some people are just kind of frightened by the whole thing, frightened to go out. And um, it, it is really impacting on them. Mm. How were you and the other scientists uh, chosen to, to give evidence today, uh, an expert in, in your field, I'm, I'm sure? Have you ever done anything like this uh, in the past, Tom? I have, yeah. I, I spoke to the um, House of Commons Select Committee that, that was looking at Ebola when that happened. And I think it's because of my role uh, directing this Emerging Infections Research Unit. It's the UK's Emerging Infections Unit, but it's based here at the University of Liverpool because we have a lot of expertise in tackling infections of all sorts, as you know. Mm. And if we want to find out about a particular subject, you know, we, we talk to people who 
know about it, you know, people who've got the information, people who deal with it on, on, on a daily basis. Is there any commitment from the government to to take it forward or is it just a, an information gathering project uh, at the moment? Well, no, because, um, uh, you, you know, I mean, I'm not an expert in parliamentary processes, but my understanding is that laws are made between the House of Commons and the House of Lords. You know, mm-hmm. legislation comes to the House of Lords. So the fact that there's a Lords inquiry that uh, has been looking at this uh, and, and trying to understand what are the lessons, particularly the longer term care lessons for patients who are going to have neurological problems, brain problems, relating to COVID-19, I think that will feed into future legislation because we have to make big decisions about how we organise our healthcare services. You know, the pandemic has had an impact, uh, a massive impact on healthcare services in terms of a lot of patients with the disease initially, now fewer patients with the disease, but we've changed the way we manage our other healthcare problems. We're doing a lot of it remotely. We've now got this large uh, group of people who have got brain problems because of the pandemic, either because the virus has caused strokes or because it's infected the brain itself to cause inflammation, and that's called encephalitis, mm. or because we've got this large group of people with mental health problems relating to the pandemic. So, you know, in some ways, it's an opportunity for us to, to think again about how we provide these kinds of services, particularly the mental health side, which I think hasn't been uh, done as, as well as it could in the past. There's not as big a provision as, as there should be. Yeah, it's because we can't see it, really, isn't it? It's it's one of those those, those hidden issues, and it's only started to come to the fore over the last, I would say, maybe five or six years when we've started to to talk about it, which is crucial. I think that's right. It, there's stigma around it, but there was also, if we take stroke as the other example, there has been stigma around stroke in the past, and over the last ten, twenty years, the stroke services across the country have have changed enormously. When I was a medical student, if somebody had a stroke, they were admitted to the ward, they were sort of tucked up in the corner, Mm. um, they'd get some physio and some rehab. But now we've got brilliant stroke services uh, in the northwest and across the whole country. And I think mental health has lagged behind, but we should see this as an opportunity to say, right, what's wrong with the current services and how do we improve those? Uh, so once you've uh, you've given your, your ed- evidence, I mean, it must be quite nerve wracking, though, because you kind of sat in in front of um, it's almost like, you know, a crescent shape, isn't it? A semicircle of people who are firing questions at your left, right and centre. Yeah, is that quite a nerve wracking experience? Well, it was, when I did the uh, Ebola one a couple of years ago, it was um, a crescent shape, like you say. And uh, but now, I mean, I. I've sort of had a career of sitting in front of panels talking about things, whether it's <laughs> yeah. whether it's uh, defending or explaining research we've done, whether it's um, defending grant applications. In fact, this one, because of the um, COVID restrictions, uh, the Lords are doing it all remotely over right. Zoom. So um, I tend to just think of these things as a, as a chat, uh, trying to explain what's going on. Even chatting to you, Snelly, in the early days, uh, you know, I might have got a bit nervous. Uh, but now it's just a, a break from breakfast, having a chat uh, about what we're all talking about anyway. So, um, and I think if you if you treat it like that, then it's not too bad. Well, I'll tell you what, um, it's funny you should say that. I mean, I still get nervous every single day and I've been doing it forever. But if you were nervous, it's, it certainly didn't come over. But listen, Tom, thanks very much. Good luck today. And uh, it's thanks. an important uh, it's an important exchange, this. And, and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll, we'll move forward and we'll learn more and we'll be able to help people too. Tom, thank you. Take thank care. You. Cheers. Bye bye. Uh, the extremely nervous uh, Tom. Uh, it's funny, isn't it? You You'd know, never believe anyone like never that believe. was nervous. No, not at all. Professor Tom Solomon, there, director of UK's Emerging Infections Research Unit at the University of Liverpool, and professor of neurology at the Walton Centre NHS Foundation Trust. If he can get nervous, it's okay for me and you. <laughs> yeah, it makes we're all, we're all in this together, <laughs> all aren't we? <laughs> we are all in it together. But I tell you what, you certainly couldn't tell. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, colleagues, for us as well.